It's always hard to decide a topic. This time we will talk about tape, but mainly about Show Tape, the plugin. It's a free plugin, it's open source, it's completely free, and I think it's not getting the attention it deserves. I made this example. And straight from Mexico City, my name is Juanchis, and let's talk about the Cho Tape model. One of the things that you might notice are the take markers. I can also make a video on that. Let me know in the comments if you're interested. If anything you see makes you question what is that and why don't I know about it, let me know in the comments and I'll gladly make a video on it. Tape was a medium that has been used for too many years and it sounds great and it has like a very particular characteristic a very particular tone and way of sounding to it. So tape is this magnetic mm, medium that uses a certain width to manage a certain number of channels. And that, that's what decides the dynamic range available. And the speed of the tape, the speed that it's like running, that's what decides our frequency response. So. Those are the two main things that you have to have in mind always when thinking about tape. Also, that it will soften up the transients a lot because it's magnetic and it's not just voltage spiking uh, from one second to another, it's softer. Also, tape has compression to it. It's saturation, but it's also compression to it because saturation is compression and compression is saturation, but one is not necessarily the other. They are two different things. Whenever you go into the website, you will go down and down and down and you will find this plugin, you'll download it, you'll install it. So for example, tape plugins are usually suggested for mix boss kind of stuff, for higher hierarchy within the mix or processing. Sometimes you can really push into the tape so you get a certain tone of things. So I'm using it in different places with different objectives. Since it's a non-linear process, it's going to react differently depending on how hard are you hitting it. For example, when I solo my snare, without it, it sounds like this. Probably not doing too much because I have the tape effects on, the tape effects off, I could drive it, I could saturate it, I have the compressor pretty much pushed in, but I'm compensating, I'm using the makeup gain right here, and I'm only tightening the, the snare a little bit, and I'm using the speed to make it duller. So that EQs a lot in a very particular way. So sometimes I like EQing things only with this speed parameter of the show tape. Other than that, there's nothing to it. I could also filter the snare going in or make a certain balance of the stereo or the mid side if I wanted to, but it's slightly stereo, but it's not stereo enough. But I'm, I'm just using it to make it a little bit tighter and a little bit snappier without being too bright. On the other hand, on my kick drum, my kick drum without the plug-in sounds like this. It already has this distortion to it, right? And when I turn it on, you can even see up here that it's moving. The harder you hit it, the more it's going to move. For this one, I'm also dulling it a little bit. I'm using a little bit of compression with similar time parameters. And most of the idea that I have here is that whenever maybe you're handling different kind of samples, you want to help them even sound closer to the tone as if they were part of the same kit. That's why I'm using the same plugin of the same tape modeling making a better integration that's really passive in the brain, but the brain knows because it listens to a similar contour of different instruments, right? So I'm not doing anything funny right here. The cowbell originally is like this. But then again, I'm dulling it a little bit, I'm compressing a little bit, but more of the effect that I want is that I'm shoving it into tape.
You can probably even listen now to that small effect that's in really, really low in the sample. It's like a, ooh, like some voice or some really tone clear sound to it. So compressing samples always lets you find out strange things about it. But how about making some parallel compression using the show tape model? The idea of any parallel processing in the end is nothing but making it sound really, really processed and adding it up to the main sound. I think of parallel compression, if this helps you in any way, as a way of setting a new floor and that's why and that's why things sound louder because they don't go as low because it's we're dealing with dynamic range so when you have certain sound compressed slightly like a really natural sound you can add parallel compression that's heavily compressed and it adds this rms sound to it that's a new floor where the actual natural sound can't get a lot lower from and that's why you reduce the dynamic range from the parallel relating to the natural sound and it's a new sensation a new feeling of energy if you push it too close you're killing the dynamics of your music so it's a really really hard sweet spot to find uh, in this case it sounds like this If I open the routing of the track, you will see that you can always mix into any process that you are using. So I'm just lowering a lot of the hi-hat because I think it's too high. Maybe I could lower a little bit of the cowbell. And I'm really, really pushing it. And now I'm actually using the tape module for saturating it heavily. And I'm using a different algorithm. For the instruments, straight into the instruments, I was usually using the RK2, but for this one, I'm using the NR4. Be sure to check the user guide. They are different. Be really careful with the V1 because it's going to increase the level a lot. The rest of them can work really, really good and make and give you different sounds and different tone qualities. They are different. They have different equalizations. They have li a little bit of different harmonic distortion. They have different harmonics to each one of them. And I'm making the parallel compression even duller because I don't want this to be able to become the really, really, really main sound of it. I just wanted to add a lot of vibe and edge to the sound. I'll mute it and I'll unmute it. And yes, I know I should be gain matching that one, but that's part of, part of the consequence of having parallel compression. So I don't mind having that level difference. You could also try it on some keys or some sort of chords. Maybe for this, you don't have to use nor the tape, nor the loss module, nor the compression. Maybe you want to make it a little bit lo-fi style and you can use the degrade module. And let's make it whoa a little bit. So it detunes really, really slow. With the degrade, you want to be careful. I don't always like this really high floor noise. So I would be really, really careful with it. And with the chew model, it really is nothing more than a dropout kind of control. That 
that means that you could automate this and make effects with it. So for example, I can look for the Cho depth, for the Chu depth, open the automation lane, and maybe for the last chord, I want to add a little bit more of this and then back down. Something like this maybe. And now I can take this and create an automation item and I can duplicate and I can bring it, bring it here and maybe I can make the second section with a little bit of cutting out, something like this. So yeah, you can really play around with these ideas. I think you, you get the idea of what I'm trying to explain. And this opens up the idea of white tape. Again, there, there's so much competition on which tape plugin to use and which one sounds best and which one is truer to whatever thing. And honestly, Cho Tape does, does most of the things that I need it to do Maybe there are a couple of uses that I that it's not so good at. Probably for mastering, I would use something like Tube by Goodhertz. I have a video on it. It was the first video on my channel. Uh, but this one, it can really give you a, a softer compression to it. That's not part of a barium compressor, but it has its own vibe to it. The bias also generates dropouts. The gaps also generates dropouts. The thickness also makes the sound duller. The spacing also creates cutouts, but there are different vibes to it. So I think this plugin lets you be much more creative with what you're trying to do instead of just thinking of tape as a way of shaving off the high end or adding some tape sound to it. Because if you haven't been in front of real to real tapes, for hours and hours and hours, probably we don't know how tape really sounds. That's just a suggestion as usual. Try, let me try to make things stick a bit better together in the master route using the same Cho tape model. I also uploaded a video on how to make a Leslie. Uh, the azimuth, what does is place with the difference of the left and the right channel. It has more to do with the play, playhead than anything else, but it actually gives you like this off pace effect that can sound good on a certain kind of instruments. I wouldn't use it for sticking things together. But this whole module, other than the azimuth, is a great high-end control for your mixes. Cho tape is an amazing plugin. I know it doesn't seem so exciting. I probably have made videos that seem so much more exciting, 
But this thing on vocals, this thing on guitars, this thing as a way of integrating better your samples for any beat making you're doing or any digital in the box production simply does wonders. One last thing is that if you have different plugins, uh, they are using the same idea as other companies that I think that the first one I saw to do this was Slate Digital where they have groups assigned to the plugin. So it communicates inside. So if I change the high services mode or the algorithm for one, it changes it for every single one. So it's RK4, NR4, NR8. And that's really fast for working. The less time you have to think about things, the faster the ideas will simply come out and you will land them right there on the fly. If you like this kind of videos, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. Straight from Mexico City, my name is Juanchis and thanks for listening.